Hi guys, welcome to Youth Online this Sunday morning. My name is Thea and I'm part of the youth team at Central Vineyard in Northampton. I hope this video finds you really well and that you're keeping safe. Now I wonder what have you been doing with your free time of late? What have you wasted time on? Well, I've got a bit of a confession. I have spent way, way too much time watching random videos on YouTube and various social media platforms. I've watched random things about cats. I've watched random things on TikTok with my friends doing miming to songs and dancing badly. I've also got a bit of an addiction to videos of people shaving their head or dyeing their hair bright pink, bright green, or a combination of all of the colors. I'm a little bit worried, to be honest. But one of the things I have done on social media for the last 10 days is I've done a thing called the album challenge. Now you may know about this, you may not, but basically you have to post one album a day for 10 days. Uh, and these albums are meant to be uh, things that have influenced you in the music that you love or the music that you now listen to. Now I love music. I absolutely love so much music that I found this really hard. How do you choose 10 albums? How? There are so many great albums. And so I just picked a few random ones of different types of music that I like because I love classical music. I love cheesy pop. I love rock and roll. I love all sorts of music. I love indie. I'm not so much into heavy metal. Um, I love worship songs. I love so much. How could I choose? Anyway, I've managed to complete that now, um, but it got me thinking about music that I used to listen to and that actually some music I've not listened to for a long time and it's really good and I should go and listen to it again. And it made me think about some of the worship songs that I used to sing and I used to, you know, hear at my old church. And that's where I'd like to start today's talk. I'd like to read you, it's okay, I'm not going to sing, um, some lyrics from a song that we used to sing in my church, what felt like pretty much every week. Uh, not Northampton, this is before I, I moved here in my previous church. So if you're ready, listen and I'll read you the lyrics. You might know it, you might even have sung it. I lay my life down at your feet because you're the only one I need. I turn to you and you are always there. In troubled times, it's you I seek. I put you first, that's all I need. I humble all I am to you. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. You are the way, the truth and the life. I live by faith and not by sight for you. We're living all for you. Now my song, my sorry, my church loved this song. It's by Hillsongs United. And um, I think it's because the worship leader liked to really rock out. And it's quite a rocky song if you don't know it. And I, he got to play his electric guitar. Actually, I really loved singing it. I love the lyrics. Now I'm going to come back to the lyrics of that song later in my talk because it sets the scene well for our I am saying that we are looking at today. Now, uh, you probably have seen some of the other videos that we've been posting and you will know that we are looking at some of what Jesus said and did whilst he was living on earth. But in particular, we have been looking at the seven I am sayings that we find written down and recorded in the Gospel of John. So I want us to start by reading the Bible together. Switch your phone on, pick your Bible up off of the shelf. I am using the good news youth edition today and if you have got it you need to turn to page 1276 uh, and we are going to be looking at John chapter 14 uh, and it's just uh, six verses to John 14 verse 1 to 6 um, and in my bible it's got like a little section heading um, that tells you what it's about so if you're ready I'm going to start it says, Jesus is the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and also believe in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. 
I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas, who's one of Jesus's disciples, says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how how do we know the way to get there? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Some amazing, amazing things happen in the whole of the Gospels. But today we're just centering in on just these few tiny verses. And in actual fact, we're really, really only concentrating on that last verse. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one uh, goes to the Father except through me. Now it's important to have a bit of background to know what's happened before this uh, kind of incident, this conversation takes place in the Bible. So I wanna quickly just tell you what has happened. So Jesus and his disciples, his followers have been doing loads of stuff for nearly three years. And Jesus gathers them all together and has what we um, know as the Last Supper or Passover. Jesus washes his disciples' feet and starts to have some really big conversations with them about things that are going on. Judas, he says, go and do what you need to do. And as we know later on in the story, we know that Judas betrays Jesus. Now, none of the other disciples know what's going on at this point, but Judas leaves. Jesus then starts to say to his disciples, I'm going away and you can't follow me. And I think they probably get a bit confused because they've been following him, like I said, for nearly three years and living with him day in and day out doing ministry. So they're a bit confused as to where he's going and what he's doing. And so Peter jumps in and says, no, Jesus, you know, we'll never leave you. We'll we'll always follow you. And Jesus has this awkward conversation where he says to Peter, I tell you the truth, Peter, that in a few days time, you will deny even knowing me three times. So it's quite a kind of pivotal, important part of the story um, uh, of Jesus's life that we've we've got to. And it's really unsettling because Jesus is is really kind of mixing things up. And, you know, I don't think the disciples really know what's going on. So Jesus then comes back and and, and he says, um, let's have a look in verse one, do not be worried or upset. Classic Jesus. How many times do we read in the Bible? Do not be worried. Do not be anxious. Do not be upset. Jesus says, believe in God and also believe in me. And I'm going to go and prepare a place with my father. And then when I come back, I'm going to take you with me. And you already know the, the way that leads to the place that I'm going. And Thomas basically goes, Mm, no, no, we don't. Uh, no, we don't, Lord. We don't know where you're going. So, so how, so how do we know the way to get there? And Jesus replies with this amazing saying. He says, "Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life." So let's just unpack those three words just a little. Jesus says, "I am the way." What does he mean? I am the way. I am the way to where? I am the way. What what does that even mean? Well, what Jesus is saying is, I am the way to get to God. I am the way to understand him. I am the way to connect to him. Not the religion of the past, not the traditions, not the law. Me, me, Jesus, I am the way. Believing in me, believing in Jesus means you can reconnect and be connected to God. That's what he means. He then says, I am the truth. What does he mean? I am the truth. He's saying, I am telling you truth. I'm telling you truth. I'm not telling you lies. Jesus is true. Jesus is pure and he only speaks the truth. Jesus is true true 
Jesus is truth. He doesn't lie to us. We can trust Jesus. And you know, in today's world, it's not always easy to know what is truth or or who we can trust. We're surrounded by it. We are surrounded by fake news. We're surrounded by adverts and influencers who are telling us um, what we need to live this dream life, this incredible product that will transform our, our life that we can't possibly live without. But Sometimes it's easier to believe the lie. Sometimes when we look in the mirror, we struggle to know what is truth and reality. It's easier to believe the lies that we tell ourselves. And sadly, there are some people today that live in homes where the people who should be speaking love and truth and offering safety and security to people are doing the opposite. They are lying. They are causing a lot of pain and suffering to people when they should be loving them. It's a hard world, isn't it? It's a hard world. And that's the reality is that it's not easy. But Jesus has something to say. Jesus can be trusted. Jesus says, I am truth. I am the truth. And so today I want to encourage you that in a world where there is a lot of fake and there's a lot of lies, there is also truth. And that truth is Jesus. That truth is available for every single person. And we don't have time to go into all of the amazing things about Jesus. But that's why it's really important that we read our Bible. I would encourage you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John because they are the stories of Jesus. And when you read those or you listen to them, It's there that you find out who Jesus was, what he did, what he said. We see his lifestyle. We see his heart. We see his attitude. We see his whole life backs up what he is saying in this statement of I am the way, the truth and the life. Read those Gospels and find out the truth about Jesus. And lastly, it says, I am the life. I am the life. Well, I wonder what sort of life were you and I meant to have? Now, last week, Charlie looked at John 10, 10 and said that we know the answer, actually. In John 10, 10, Jesus says, I have come in order that you might have life in all its fullness. Now, I think life in all its fullness means peace and joy and freedom and love and forgiveness and purpose. And Jesus says, I offer you all of these because I offer you life. I offer you life and not death. So Jesus replies to um, to that first question um, that Thomas asks by saying, well, the answer is I am the way, the truth and the life. But do you know what? There's another nine words. He doesn't say those. He has another nine words that he tags on the end. And he says, no one goes to the father except through me. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the father except through me. It almost feels like Jesus is repeating himself, doesn't it? Like, well, he's already said all of that in the I am the way. So why add on that that last little bit? And I'm, I'm not really sure. Maybe he's just trying to help Thomas really understand the significance of this. Or maybe he's just saying it so that people can be really clear and understand on the way um, and how he says no one. No one goes to the Father except through me. He's basically saying the only way, the only way to God is through me, through Jesus. And he's saying, it's only me. It's not because you're good. It's not because you're religious. It's not because you're intelligent. It's not because you're pretty. It's not through any rituals or festivals. It's about believing and following me. Maybe today you're still trying to figure out what Christianity is all about. Um, And you would say, actually, you know, I'm not a Christian. I, I don't really understand it all. Well, wherever you are today, I want to just speak into your life a little bit today and say, I wonder whether like many people in the world, 
You want to know the answer to this question. Why am I here? What was I created for? Well, I believe the answer to that is God. I believe that you were made and you were created to be connected to God, to be in a relationship with him, to live. And you have that opportunity today. Jesus is offering you that opportunity. Jesus is offering you the way. He's offering you the truth and he's offering you the life. God is completely perfect. Everything he does, everything he is, everything he thinks is completely perfect. And we use the word holy. Now, because of that, anything that isn't perfect can't be anywhere near him. And unfortunately, every single human being on the planet falls short of perfection. Even Mary Poppins was only practically perfect. Now, Christians call all of that bad stuff that keeps us separated from being close to God sin. To try and explain it simply, I'd say it's all the bad things that we think, uh, the bad things that we do to others, to ourselves and even to God. Uh, I think humans, uh, ma- we want to make our own choices. We want to make our own rules. We don't want somebody to tell us how to live. We think we don't need God and we want to be in charge of our own lives. And all of this stuff is sin. And that is what separates us from being connected to God. But the amazing truth is that because God loves us so much, He wants to give us another chance. He wants to give us a way of reconnecting and being back in relationship with him. And that's why he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to to die and to deal with that sin. He is the perfect sacrifice. Um, He takes our place and he dies so that we might live, so that we might be connected back to God. And the amazing thing is, all we have to do is ask. All we have to do is ask God to forgive us for the stuff that we've done, the stuff that we've thought that separated us from him. To thank him for sending Jesus to die in our place and to ask him to to save us, to be our leader, our guide, our teacher, our king from now on. So if that's you and you want to become a Christian today, you want to start following Jesus, then I want to just pray a short prayer that you can either say out loud um, by kind of stopping and replaying the video, or you can just close your eyes and and say it in your heart. But this is it. This is all it means to, to, to become a Christian is just to say a few simple words. Father God, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he is the way, the truth and the life. Today, I want to say sorry and to ask that you'd forgive me for the bad stuff that I've said, that I've done, that I've thought. That means I've been separated from you. Please hear my prayer today, God, and help me as I learn what it means to be a follower of you. Jesus, be my leader and my saviour. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer today, then please do get in touch with us and let us know because we want to help you to grow in your faith and to understand a bit more about what it means to to follow and believe in Jesus. But what about for those of us who would already call ourselves Christians this morning? What what can we learn from this passage? Well, I want to challenge us, actually. I want to challenge us this morning about how much do we really believe that saying of Jesus? It's very easy to forget that those simple words um, can have such a life-changing effect on us all. If you really believe those words to be true, they completely and utterly change your life. So when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one gets to God except through me. Do you really believe that? Because if you really believe that to be true, surely you would want to tell your friends the truth that Jesus offers life and freedom and all of those things. Unfortunately, truth and popularity don't always go together. 
And as a Christian, there are going to be times in your life when you make decisions and choices that are not popular. You are going to choose to do or not do, to say or not say things because it's the right thing to do, because it's what God would want you to do. And unfortunately, that may make you unpopular. It may single you out. But if you believe it, if you really believe it, then you'll be okay. Because the other truth is that God promises that he will never leave us, will never forsake us. And so although life might be difficult and the choices that we make might make us unpopular, God will not leave us in those moments. He will help us to stand firm. So I want to challenge and encourage you to think about who you can be sharing your faith with. And I want to challenge you to think about who you can be praying for, because you might not have people in your life right now that you can talk to, but you can start to pray. But you should pray and you should also tell them because those two things are really, really powerful. So maybe you want to take a moment today to think about who can I pray for in my friendship group or in my family that does not yet know Jesus? Who can I pray for? And Lord, give me an opportunity to tell them about you. I'm going to finish by praying for us about that around us being bold and courageous and sharing our faith. And then I'm going to read the lyrics of that song, One Way Jesus, to finish our time together today. Father, I pray that you would help us to be bold and courageous. Lord, help us to truly believe that statement that you are the way, the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through you. God, will you help us to be brave, to tell our friends about you Help us to pray and help us to go and help us to tell other people. Lord, help us to know that although it might be difficult and there will be tough times ahead, you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. And Lord, I pray that the words of this song might be true for each and every one of us. Lord, I lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one I need. I turn to you and you are always there. In troubled times, it's you I seek. I put you first and that's all I need. I humble all I am to you. One way, Jesus. You're the only one that I could live for. You are the way, the truth and the life. I live by faith and not by sight for you. We're living all for you. Amen.